You just got to think of something and uh, don't, don't just test on your you know, 36 inch monitor that you just got. Maybe if you're overflowing that area, you've got too many menu options. <laughs> you should revisit your design, maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. I mean, honestly. Who knows? And it's, there's no one size fits all. No, there's not. No, there's not. But it is good to at least remember it and don't forget to test it on different, different sizes. Um, all right, so the takeaway is simply this. Uh, the split view is, the, is flexible for most patterns. It might even be for all patterns, to be honest. I mean, all it does is show a menu and then take it away. It doesn't, have, it doesn't um, add or remove from navigation or anything like that. It's all up to you to implement. It's really just a, an affordance, a navigation affordance that you can add to your application that's pretty common now in the industry. Yep. Yeah, uh, let me show you a demo. All right, so I'm going to start with the solution, right? So this is in Visual Studio. This is my app. This is the uh, the template that we've created that uh, that we can go and show all kinds of nice things. It just demonstrates some capabilities. But here it is, right here on the left. The um, I'm using the that's that font that we were talking about and a couple yeah. other symbols that are there. And so as I navigate around, um, it follows me around. See, I can put the back button up here, which is a nice affordance as well, yeah. as well as navigate to different pages, make it larger, make it smaller. But again, all of this is me doing this. This is not anything that's built into the, uh, the split view. This is me deciding this is what I want it to do. This is the size I want it to be and implementing it. But let's take a look at it in Visual Studio. So this is where we have it. And it all starts with the style. So remember, it was a radio button that we're retemplating. And so this is the style that targets my radio button and specifically calls it out to be a nav button style. And what it really does is just changes the background and includes an icon. So we can easily provide that. And then let's look at the shell. And the shell's pretty simple. Uh, the shell's just a page, and you can see the page right there, and I reference my style so that it's part of the, uh, it merges in as a resource for this page. And then there's the split view. And the split view has a handful of radio buttons in its pane. Uh, there's the, I can go to main, details, privacy, about, and then it's up to me how, how many of those I want. Each of those then inherits from the style, that, the custom style we've created. And I could set the width and of course, the, the, or the length in this case, the length of the compact pane, so it matches exactly the way I've designed it. So out of the box, the developer can first should decide on the design that they want. You know what would happen if we shipped this with a whole bunch of buttons and things, um, almost like Windows 8. Remember how everything started to look like the grid template? Yeah. Because people would start with the grid template and not change a thing. If we ship this with a series of styles right out of the box, you would see every application having the exact same design. Yeah. There's a part of me that's like, that'd be sort of cool, but there's a part of me that remembers Windows 8 and is frustrated that all these apps look almost exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. So you really just get the split view as a tool that you get to implement and you get to skin or design the way that you want it to go. Cool. Yeah, it's an easy enough little control. Yeah. Um, so, uh, something to remember, the split view content is intended to be the frame because the split view control is intended to be a navigation affordance, yeah. something that users are already accustomed to thanks to the mobile web and thanks to many other platforms that have introduced this and kind of it's got quite, them into yeah, it. It's quite a common yeah, UI metaphor that we're seeing out there. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice, nice. So control. a couple new controls we saw was the relative panel. We also talked about the month calendar and then just in general the navigation framework. But then along comes the split view that helps make navigation even easier and maybe a little more uniform across all of our different pages. I, it, Sometimes it's easy to get lost in an application that you drill down, drill down, drill down, dr and never have a context. Yeah. Something like this can give you uh, yeah. an opportunity to have some sort of, of UI for that. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. All right, that's the split view. New in your XAML toolbox for Windows 10 preview. Try it out. Play with it yourself. See if it's right for your application. Then come back and watch another module with us. Welcome to the Developer's Guide for Windows 10 Preview. I'm Jerry Nixon, Developer Evangelist here in the United States, and here's my colleague Andy. I'm Andy Wigley. I'm a Technical Evangelist working out of Microsoft in the UK. Some of the best features of Windows development is being able to use our Maps Control. The Maps Control is rich and awesome on Windows Phone, and now it's a universal control. Andy, I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to talk about the, uh, how we can launch the built-in map apps. So there's uh, in all our Windows platforms, they have come with a great maps management infrastructure. And, and they have obviously come with a maps app. 
So if you want to use apps, uh, maps, maps in your apps, hard to say, <laughs> try saying that. If you want to use maps in your apps, you, you maybe you don't need to write, a, you know, put a map control and write it all from scratch. Mm -hmm. So we, we'll look at how you do that. But then if you do want to do some uh, custom mapping, then you probably want to build something from scratch. So uh, we'll have a good look at the map control and how you can layer your own content onto it. Um, and then finally, we'll wrap up with a quick look at some uh, services, some other APIs that can help you with uh, kind of map-related uh, topics. Terrific. All right, well, let's start with that first one. That's really interesting. I can leverage maps and never even have the control in my app. Well, yeah, so this is the real easy way of making use of maps in your applications. We have a mapping URI scheme. So you can do this with your own apps. You know, you can have your app uh, registered to handle a particular URI scheme. Mm -hmm. Uh, custom and, protocol. Yeah, a custom protocol. So it's one of the app-to-app -app communication things that we have in, in our platform. Uh -huh. uh, but this is the same thing that's used to actually launch the built-in maps. So we have a, a Bing Maps URI scheme. And it has a load of different you know, things you can specify in the query string. Check on MSDN, there's a whole bunch of options. Yeah, so look at the documentation. The topic's URI scheme for Bing Maps app. Uh, but here's a simple little example where we set the center point. CP is equal to, then you've got a lat long, latitude and longitude. Um, and the zoom level. So uh, zoom level, uh, you know, this particular case is 17. And then you just call windows.system.launcher and launch URI sync. And to be clear, uh -huh. your app is no longer running. It's their app that's running. Yep. Some, I mean, if you're on a desktop, you might be side by side. If you're on the phone, you, it may have overlaying yours then. But you don't have to do anything from that point forward. All the rich functionality of Bing Maps is now part. Yep, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And another thing that's kind of related to this is that actually all of our machines now, uh, uh, Windows machines, have got the capability of having offline maps. And this is really cool. We've had this on Windows Phone for quite a while. Uh, we didn't until now have it on our uh, Windows desktop tablets, but now you can do this as well. So it means that, you know, if you're traveling abroad... Right, I'm driving around with my desktop. Yeah, yeah, so... Yeah. And it's disconnected from the internet. Yeah, you're not... This, you are driving around... Just, no, Larry. Uh, you, you, Jerry, you need to have a... Um, uh, you're talking about, a, you know, a tablet here or something like this. Yeah. So you're offline. It means you don't have to use data if you're traveling on roaming. Yeah, that's you know, right. it's expensive. So you can get the maps. You can cache them on, and it's great. And we have um, so that's kind of one. Of, it's in the system settings. But if you want to build into your uh, application, uh, switching to uh, to to that settings, you can launch directly from your app straight into those uh, the offline map settings using the Map Manager API. So there's a show download in Maps UI, which just takes you to the UI where you can choose which particular app map you want to download, the user can download. Um, and then there's an update UI, so you can actually go and check to see whether any of the maps you've already got offline, have, if there are any updates available. So well, using nice. this scheme seems great. Uh, show us how it works. I want to see how, just how easy, easy. Oh, it, yeah, it is. It's really, really easy. So let's, let's, let's okay. go and do that. OK, so here we are. I'm actually just, I'm not even going to insult you by building this. It's so simple. So I've got a couple of buttons. That's the long, longitude, lack longitude, and the zoom level. So zoom level is uh, one Yeah, thing. just like a slide that yeah, we had. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So we'll do this on the, the desktop. Here we are, our massively complex UI. So first of all, show map. It's launching into the built-in maps. Uh, this is my friend uh, Madge's house, uh, Buckingham Palace in London. Oh, really? Uh, her Madge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're on good terms, you know. And the, this is actually a split view control. You see there with the, uh, the, the pane on the left. And it's, a, it's, you know, you've got all the great map stuff in Zoom. We're not right in now. your app anymore. We're in the no, Bing Maps app. No, this is actually app. in the Bing Maps. And this is the other one. So this is launching directly into the map settings from your app. So, Whoa. you know, how rich you, all that capability I've just added. And here we go. You go off and download a map. So go off to Europe and choose the particular country you're interested in. Mm. Go to the United Kingdom. And then you've got you know, different regions. So I'm going to download Wales, which is where I live. So oh. uh, that's starting to download. Um, and we'll take a little while, so I don't think we'll, we'll not hang around to wait until that's finished. That will just carry on in the background, and then I'll be able to travel. You'll be able to travel in Wales and, uh, you know, use the uh, And you might use that settings thing. control just to kind of guide the user, right, to be able to say, uh, be sure and go here if you want to download your maps so you can have them offline as well, right? Yeah. Like just absolutely. to be a little bit more of a useful yeah, app to the user. Yeah, friendly, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. All right, so that's, that's if we don't use the map control at all. Honestly, that could be half the apps out there. Oh, yeah. For sure. And it's, it's a real easy value add to add real great functionality for very little code. But sometimes you need more than that. Or sometimes you, got, you do. Particularly if you want to overlay the map with your own content, you need to put, you know, a, or, or you, you can want to change the whole 
tiles that the map is draw, mm. drawn from, you know, then you need to actually kind of start getting into uh, coding and uh, using the map control. So if I'm a developer and I'm accustomed to the, the old map, you know, just a few months ago's map, and now I have the UAP map, um, yeah, give me some contrast of what, what, what do I have? All right, this is a new map control. So yeah, we seem to go through map controls like every release we have a new map control. And yes, we got a new map control, which is really cool. Actually, it's not completely new. So if you are a, if you've been building anything with maps in with Windows Phone 8.1, WinRT, yeah. then this is the control you've been using. So it's now gone oh, universal. Brilliant. It's the same one. So in actual fact, I mean, there's not a lot of documentation around on UAP, just at the, probably at the moment, depending on when you're watching this. So uh, at when the tech previous first released. But this particular control is very well documented because it is the phone 8.1 WinRT oh, map nice. control. So you can go, go and look it up on, uh, on MSTN and find out. Um, so it's, uh, it's very rich control. You can overlay. Uh, you can draw stuff onto the surface yourself with these map icon objects, which uh, you can put a, an, a graphic on it and then position it uh, using a latitude and longitude on your, on your map. Um, you can also overlay the map control with any XAML object. So you can actually overlay with anything, anything that's a XAML object. You can draw directly onto the map. Um, and you can ah, also... So like a rich pop-up or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah, so you're overlaying it with rich content, yeah. It becomes integrated, it becomes part of the map. But, um, and then also you can actually, you can use custom tile source support. So uh, ah. this is very interesting because um, whenever, when the user sort of pans around the map and, and zooms in and out, the way that the image that you're seeing is actually composed of a number of different tiles. They've kind of, they kind of normalized the, the whole surface of the planet into kind of squares of yeah. tiles. Um, and, at zoom level one, which is the whole world view, that's actually what you're looking at there. If you look at a map at zoom level one, that's four tiles. Huh. And then you go to zoom level two and it splits each tile into another four tiles. And it keeps on doing that all the way down until you get to zoom level 20, which is right where you're down at kind of street level. You can override these tiles. You can provide your own tiles in there as well. So uh, if you've got a huge number of objects you want to position, you want to represent on a map, you might want to generate your own custom tiles and overlay them onto the map. So it's I mean, very you could rich. Be in, you could be in agriculture and you pay to get very up-to-date tiles, right? And you could have that sort of yeah. aerial photography that you want to include in your map, that's very reasonable. Yeah, yeah, and the, there's sources out on the internet with different map tile sources. And they, this is a standard for how mapping systems, not just ours, but uh, you know, from other vendors, how they represent mapping data. All right, well, so what can we show on a map? Okay, so yeah, so this is actually the, the ways you can display particular content onto your map. So uh, you can use both XAML, this kind of splitting into two kind of things. First of all, first of all these um, XAML children, which you can overlay. Um, and the object you use that is this thing called the map items control, which you can data bind to a collection of objects. Beautiful. Um, and each object would obviously have to have a latitude and longitude property to say where it was. Um, and then uh, you you place your um, you you place them uh, on your map items control onto the map control, which has some attached properties. So effectively, you say, okay, I want you to draw this map items control at this particular latitude and longitude. And then it positions it exactly in the right place on the map. And also has this thing, this idea of a normalized anchor position. So if you look at those, those red balloons on that, that graphic there, each of them would be a map items control. Um, and the, the kind of point of the, uh, the bottom of that balloon icon mm -hmm. is pointing at the, you need that to be pointing at exactly the right position. So the normalized anchor position is you, you divide, you say, take the area of your map con item control and you have a, an axis of, uh, of 0 to 1 along the X and 0 to 1 along the Y. And effectively what you're saying is where exactly in that grid of 1 by 1 is the, the, the lat long position. So it yeah. depends where, which way your icon is pointing. If it's pointing down, you, want, um, it, you need it to be um, 0 on the Y axis and 0.5 on the X. So it positions, you know, the, the point, it's actually positioned on the bottom center of your, your little map item. Oh, control. I see, I see. Or if you have 0, 0, it means that the, the the lat long position you give is the top left corner. Top left. You know, so you get the idea. You can put it right on Waldo if you need to find out where he is. Mm -hmm. Sorry, <laughs> say again. <laughs> Never mind. Jerry, let me know. Right, okay. Um, All right, so that's the XAML option, but you can also do map elements. So, yeah, so the other option is this thing called map icons. So uh, you can, uh, and there are different, you can place them onto it, the, and there's map polygons and map polylines as well, so you can place them onto, onto the map. Um, 
you have to be a little bit careful with map icons because um, they are kind of drawn on a best effort basis. Mm. So if you've got essential, really, really important stuff that really must be shown at all times, this probably isn't the one for you. But if you're kind of filling in with contextual information and you're you know, enriching the view that your user is looking at, that's great because as they zoom in and out, it will show or hide things according to you know, what makes sense from a user experience point of view. You might go to map elements if you find that you have too many XAML children too. That might be another driver where your yeah. XAML is not performing because you yeah. have so many elements. Yeah. And the other one is if you've got thousands of elements you want to show on it, then you are into drawing your own tiles. So uh, that's yeah. kind of a more of extreme example. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're talking about map tile sources. So you can actually inject into the composite view that the user is looking at. You can inject tiles into, into the view at different places. So you can replace the, the base map tiles, the layer that the, the, the mapping system is drawing for its kind of base system, the, uh, the buildings, roads, land kind of thing. So you can go and point at an HTTP map tile data source out on the web. So you're actually pulling tiles down from the web. You can have a local map tile data source, which means you're kind supplying... Of a cache. Yeah. So you're actually supplying with your app the actual the tile images, mm. um, and they are shipped with your app, and so you're reading them out of local storage. Um, and then the third option is uh, you can have a custom map 